Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Comedy Show on BOG Radio. This is the Comedy in the Kingdom edition of the Maurice Brown Comedy Show, as we are, or as I am, presenting to you next summer, bringing you a Comedy in the Kingdom tour with about 20 great, clean, slash, Christian comedians, two of which are on our show today. Our first comedian we're going to bring out all the way from Pompano Beach, Florida. Very, very funny lady, better known as comedian Fifi from the Pompano Beach area, uh, formerly of the syndicate, nationally syndicated radio show, The Soul Funny Radio Show, which was created by the late Stefan Van. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's bring out the very talented and funny comedian fifi felicia frazier what's up fifi hey maurice you are so kind all these words and just affirmations for me it's so great i'm doing good how are you maurice i'm doing great it was it was awesome to bitch at all of these awards and such that <laughs> you have garnered over the years fifi there's there's no doubt about it Coming from Pompano Beach, how's how's the weather down there in Pompano Beach today? Um, well, there's a thunderstorm outside because you know in Florida we're it's either raining really really hard or it's really really hot. There's no in between, or yeah, it's hot and wet. <laughs> hot and wet. Yeah, that's the only. I love Florida, but it's those hurricanes this time of year that that frighten me. Only lasts about what be a month. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, being from Florida, especially from South Florida, we are like, we don't even care about hurricanes. They'll be like, a uh, hurricane is going to make landfall on Friday at 12, and we're going to the store to get water on Friday at 8. Like, what is the... <laughs> well, no, I, I actually, every year I go down there, I love doing comedy down there in the Boca Raton area, Fort Lauderdale and Miami, and the comedians already clued me in and said, if it's not a level four, they're barbecuing. That's right. We're not... You know, like I mean, I mean, you want a hot dog, Maurice? Yeah, well, okay. I mean, sure. So, Fifi, thank you so much for being on the show. We're going to go out to the Oklahoma area and bring out a comedian that was known as Oklahoma's funniest mom and also as well as Fifi Frazier a regular member of the Maurice Brown comedy show breaking down the four walls edition please with no further ado welcome Michelle Van Dusen Michelle how are you I'm doing great it's so good to see you guys woohoo yeah. this is fun what up <laughs> yeah, what what up, what up, what up indeed, uh, Michelle. It's great to have you guys on the show as we get ready for a Comedy in the Kingdom tour next summer. We've got a lot of great clean slash Christian comedians uh, um, involved. Gilbert Esquivel from California, Kason Wilson, Scott Wood, Leland Claussen from Canada, uh, you know, Danny Successful Simmons, Christy Condor, Kim Curley, uh, Joey Aiello. A lot of very, very fine comedians, and that's just to name a few. Cynthia Johnson from the Washington, D.C. area, uh, that's just to name a few. So we're, we're pretty excited about it. We want to do this God's way, and it, it's just going to be, it's a new and different way to do a comedy tour. And uh, so glad that you guys could be a part of the show. I want to share a snippet so people can get a better idea of who you guys are, because oftentimes, you're on breaking down the four walls and we're breaking down scripture and we're having fun and getting a lot of yucks in, but people don't really know who you guys are. Who is Fifi Frazier? Who is that lady they call Oklahoma's funniest mom anyway? So during this show, we're going to give everyone an opportunity to actually get to know you guys a lot better. We're going to uh, go down to Pompano Beach, ladies and gentlemen, and give you an idea of Fifi Frazier at work. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Speak y'all language. I love the Lord, I do. I had to bring my person because everybody don't know Jesus. <laughs> like they say they do. 
be laughing like I'm lying. <laughs> we don't get to get saved the same no more because you know people be stealing. People go to the altar and they be like, I just want to give my life to Christ. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to all the mothers in the house. God bless you for sacrificing your figure so that somebody could be in the world. I said, y'all, I just had, I gave birth about 18 months ago for the first time. I'm not going to really give God praise. But see, I think I waited a little too late because I'm in my 30s now. And nobody told me that your metabolism expire at 30. <laughs> it's serious, y'all. If I fall out up here, it ain't because I'm under the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's because uh, after you have children, your territory becomes enlarged. <laughs> So you're no longer able to leave the house with just your clothes on. You gotta put on equipment <laughs> underneath. Pull your stuff together. Somebody, somebody in here not breathing with me right now. It's okay. It's okay. I'm with you. I know. I feel the pain. I don't know if you snapped it, you butt it, you had to call somebody in to help you pull it up. But we made it, and this button is working because of it. So if I fall out, it ain't because I'm under the power. If I can't breathe, y'all come find the snap and let me go. Comedian Fifi <laughs> Frazier, everybody. Well, you know, you made it out of that. So you have two children, right? Yes, I gave birth to two precious, precious beings. God blessed me with pray my strength in the Lord. Well, you 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 made it, and I want to ask you: How long did it take you to come out of that situation? Like to get the territories back where the territories belong? <laughs> how long no, did see, it take you to do that? It's a see. I, I got reset. See, the first time I had my first son, my son, right? I was thirty, and I was like, okay. It took about maybe a good twenty months to get all the weight off. But it all never really came all the way off. It was still an extra 15. And then I got pregnant again at 34. Now, that was just insult to injury. Because when I had her, I was like over 200 pounds. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was bad. And then I didn't look like myself. So I had to go on a diet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, but and overall, overall, it was mostly because. uh my doctor told me that my cholesterol had gotten high. So I had to stop eating everything that tastes good. And then I, I lost the weight. Well, you, you did a great job. You did a great job. And uh, we've got Michelle Van Dusen here, uh, your your comedy compatriot here. And Michelle, you have how many children? I have four boys. You have four boys. And uh, yeah, so I'm still working on losing that weight. Uh, my youngest is uh, 264 months. So, uh, okay. you know, he's 22 now. Uh, <laughs> I've been working <laughs> on his body forever. And I finally say, um, you know what? I'm not going to wear uh, that bikini. And that's okay. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, so you have four and Fifi, you have two. You got to give us a little idea of what it's like raising children in a set you did uh and we're gonna we're gonna roll that ladies and gentlemen comedian michelle van Dusen. i hate my kids school like they can't read they can't write they can't do arithmetic we're done homeschooling <laughs> when we first started out um it, well it just got kind of creepy when the students got a crush on the teacher and it's really scary when the school bullies a three-year-old with a dirty diaper in his hand. <laughs> it is really hard to teach the alphabet if you only know three letters. G E D. <laughs> uh, but when I first started out, I had all these questions, you know, like, like, who do you write the note to if they're sick? And 
what happens if they're late to school and can you know pajamas be the school uniform and if i take them to walmart is that considered a field trip and if potty training is that a health class and like what kind of homework can i assign like dishes <laughs> right like i had no idea what to do <laughs> but the real reason we quit homeschooling because of the scandal it was written up in the school paper and everything <laughs> yeah i got caught messing around with the principal Good news, enrollment went up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle, I love it. Enrollment did indeed go up. Uh, yeah, yeah, but those scandals can be something when, when it comes to homeschooling, Michelle. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A little scary. Yeah, All a little the questions. Scary. The interview questions are really not appropriate. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so you homeschooled all four of your children. I did, but I, I, uh, I cheated at homeschooling. Yeah. Um, because yeah. you know, curriculum costs a lot of money Yes. and having four boys and, and, um, you know, moving and, and all sorts of things. Uh, I basically just 365 was my homeschool curriculum. It was the TV guide. So the first, the first class to learn your ABCs, you know, you can get Sesame Street. And then, you know, if you have any counseling issues, it's Dr. Phil and uh, Oprah. And then, you know, like, like that's, I, I just used the TV guide and circled when they had to be in and when they had recess. Recess was very important in, yes. in homeschool, yes. especially yeah. with boys, you know, got to get that energy out. So recess was almost all day. It was, it was an all day affair. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, recess a very good thing. I, th I think the day and time that we're living in now, more, a lot of parents are leaning towards homeschooling their children and, and, and that kind of thing. It's a lot of crazy things going on out here. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Maurice Brown Comedy Show, Comedy in the Kingdom Tour Edition. Uh, two of the comedians involved with the tour, Michelle Van Dusen and Felicia Fifi Frazier. Let me start out by asking you, Fifi, how you began your journey and career in comedy. Wow. Um, so long ago. Well, originally I, I decided that I wanted to become a comedian or a comedic actress when I was about seven or eight years old. Um, we had a tragedy that happened in my family. My brother, he drowned um he was about 11 years old at the time so he was my big brother but he was a little kid um yes. but he, he was like you know my big brother but uh mm -hmm. after that there was like this whole like period of really really dark grief in my family and i took it upon myself to lighten the mood <laughs> more <laughs> yeah. often than not and i yeah i was very much um inspired by a lot of the comedians that I saw on television. Um, so that was kind of where the idea was planted in my head. And then later on, I began officially um, doing comedy on my 21st birthday. I had a, a party and it was my first time doing a comedy set and I was standing up in front of all my family and friends with like my cue cards because <laughs> I couldn't remember yeah. my jokes. And yeah. uh, shortly after that, I started um, booking different events because I was already doing a lot of uh, hosting at my church at the time. My pastor would let me um, host or, you know, MC Sunday morning services every youth Sunday. So I would MC the Sunday morning services every fourth Sunday for about two years before I actually started doing comedy. So I would test out different jokes. It was fun. So that was about, oh God, I'm 38 now. So 20, about 20, well, no, God, how many years is that? Seven, 17 years? <laughs> 17 years, yes. Yeah, 17 you years. You say that as if you are an, an old sage, you youngster. Um, <laughs> but I, I love it. I, I, I love the story of how you got off and running. And clearly you are a very funny person. Uh, and it's all started from a therapeutic beginning. 
and 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 morphed in, into what it is now, which is, which is quite an amazing story. Michelle Van Dusen, tell us about your beginnings in stand-up comedy. Okay, um, yeah. So my tragedy is I was sitting home watching um, the Rosie O'Donnell show. And it was switching over to the Carolyn Ray show. And they had that little blurb like, you know, hey, do you have a, a talent? Can you sing? Can you dance? Can you tell a joke? We want you. And I'm sitting there, you know, nursing up my youngest. And I got, you know, four boys uh, crawling around and doing all sorts of things. Because at the time, I also had my sister's son over. So there was five boys in my house. And I was just kind of depressed. Just like I used to have a talent. I used to do this. I used to travel the world and be a missionary. Like it was all these things I used to do. Yeah. And I thought, well, I guess, yeah, I guess I could tell, I could tell a few jokes. But at the time they were really insults because my sister would call me up and she would insult me because I was homeschooling the, the little guys at the time. And <laughs> she's like, hey, you know, who are you going to call if they get sick? Ha, 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 click. You know, so this is what would happen. And so I, I went to Wisconsin and did this little five joke thing. And that was it. You know, one and done. I, you know, I, I did my thing in front of a TV crew and not Carolyn Ray. She had to leave. There was like five, le five of us left to do our set and she left. So, um, <laughs> so yay. She was still in the building, but she was gone. <laughs> anyway, that was it. One and done, you know, all right, Lord, what do you have next? And then we moved from, uh, Chicago where we were living down to Oklahoma. And then I heard on the radio again, like this Disney thing, like, hey, you got a talent, you can do jokes, you can sing, blah, 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 come down to the mall. And I called my friend, I'm like, should I do it? She's like, yes, you're hilarious, you should do it. I'm like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. So now I've added like two more jokes to my routine Bye. on homeschooling, yeah. right? I got, I, got, I got seven jokes now. So um, I go stand <laughs> in line and I tell the lady my few jokes and she goes, you're not ready for Hollywood. But here's a here's a callback. I was like, oh, OK. So I went to the callback and now there's like a hundred people in the room or whatever. And people would do their set and then she'd bring them over to the table and she'd whisper, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yes, no. And then they'd go. I do my thing. She doesn't call me to the table. She goes, now, I told Michelle yesterday she's not ready for Hollywood, but I want to see what she can do in a year. I'm like, yeah, challenge accepted. And so the following week, my husband and I went to the comedy club to an open mic kind of a thing. And I said, can I do this? He's like, yeah, you can. I'm not going to be back, but go ahead. I'm like, OK. So I started going and the owner of the club had favor on me and another young comedian. And um, I could go anytime and I could rehearse. I could practice. And then that club closed. And then um, a little bit later, my friend started a club. And so I hosted for like three or four months and kind of got my chops that way. Yeah. We did things, did Las Vegas, did Chicago. We did some stuff. And then I stopped and I looked at my, my young kids and I thought, what am I doing? So I got off the road and I just, I, I, cause we, at this point we had them in a public school, you know, a little local school, very good elementary. And I, I was like, I can't do it. So I stopped traveling and I, um, I got involved in their school. And then while yeah. I was in their school, I started, you know, Hey, let's have funny Fridays. And so I started, the kids would now write in jokes. I did a, you know, all school writing program and encouraged them to write. And then I'd make some tweaks on it. And then I had an after school comedy club for kids and then we yeah. would do the assemblies. And so it just kind of grew from there. So I never actually left comedy. Over the last 20 years, it was just in and out of how my kids have aged. They're now graduated college. I can go back on the road. So that's what I'm looking for. So can't wait for this tour to start. Well, you know, uh, Michelle, one of the things that's really interesting and beautiful about being a stand-up is that, you know, you, you, you talked about your story. Fifi, you shared your story. We all have, like, beginnings. But once you're up there... There's a certain level of, and this this the average person can't relate to this, number one, because they would never in a million years think to do something like that. 
it's utterly mortifying to the average person. But when you're up there, people think that uh, we, you know, first of all, we love it. But, you know, we got a lot of stuff going through our head. And we're not necessarily calm, as calm as we look. You know, there's a lot of stuff flowing through. There's a lot of nervous energy going there. But the difference is we've been able to harness it over time and get to the point where we have this certain sway and melody and style. Everybody's got their own style. And 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 we've been able to make it look like it's really not that difficult. And, you know, the thing about it is it's quite a challenge. The thing that makes it easier to deal with, it, with is because you enjoy it. It's like this. I love the challenge of trying to do this. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I just I just love hearing the beginnings of, of different comedians. What what drove you into this? How did you get started with this? And then, like I said, you just get to a point where when you're performing, you become this other person and you and you easily morph into this other person. You oh, know, with, you know, you just you just start you just become that. Sometimes it's hard to have a normal conversation with people. Sometimes, because you're thinking of all these different jokes that you have or a joke that you told and you just wanted to just run it through somebody or by somebody. A lot of people don't know that they're they're test rats in our conversations a lot of times, which is a lot of fun. But anyway, that being said, love hearing the start. Let's talk about stand up comedy in 2023 um, and and your view of today's comedy in this era, particularly for stand, clean stand-up comedy. How do people in your mind, Fifi, view stand-up comedy from a clean perspective? Hokey, waste of time. How do people perceive clean comedy? Well, I've heard a few different things um, from people in audiences and people who come up to me after the show. And even from, you know, people who are Christians. Um, I think that a lot of the new age artists, uh, clean artists are breaking down a lot of stereotypes that were very prevalent in years past. Yeah. I've had people who, who have come up to me and they're like, I never thought I'd laugh at a clean comedian, uh, less known a woman. You did good. And I'm like, yes. I'm insulted. But uh, <laughs> number one. <laughs> You know, like, but I feel that he was complimenting me. So I'm going to accept it as that, you know, but a lot of people just don't feel that um, clean comedy can be as effective as what they call mainstream comedy, um, mm -hmm. especially because our culture right now is so kind of, you know, give and take all like, yeah. There, a lot of boundaries in our current culture like there were you know in years past where you had you know your tv set and then you had your club set like nowadays there is no such thing as a tv set when it comes to the mainstream artists a lot of them yeah. they they speak the exact same way that they do in the club as they would do when yeah. they get their special or when they're on television you know it's not a difference um so I think that in recent years, because we have such an amazing group of clean comedians who are, you know, becoming more popular and we are showing that we are artists and we take our art seriously. We are taking the time to develop, you know, material that can, you know, connect across different uh, spaces. and. Yes are making sure that we are professional when we go into different arenas and, you know, we're versatile, you know what I mean? All these mm -hmm. things, as opposed to before, you would kind of consider a clean comedian as someone who would just come up and do a couple knock knock jokes and, you know, wait for the, you know, we're not doing that anymore. You know, yeah. we're coming with that fire, you know, a lot of they say how the kids say, we come with that fire and you gotta be ready. That's right. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much my take on it now. I'm excited to be a part of this this generation of artists who are not afraid to, you know, stand in their truth. That's how I feel. I'm standing in my truth. I'm a Christian. 
I am a clean artist. I do not use profanity on a regular basis. So there is no need for me to do that when I'm on stage. Um, some things I just don't find funny. And I know that there is a set of people who can identify with the things that I identify with. So, Sure, sure. Uh, Michelle Van Dusen. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, I was going to do the same answer, but Fifi got there first. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes. No, that was that was a great answer, uh, Fifi. I again, every time I hear you speak, I just I'm in awe. I mean, it's just it's just the wisdom just rolls right out of you. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> no, and that that was a serious note. Um, Thank you. I'm I. You know, you're talking about like the TV set version versus um, a club set. And there's also there's there's a difference in a clean set and a church clean set. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I'm experiencing a lot uh, here. I, I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the comedy scene has grown by leaps and bounds. Wow. And um you can catch an open mic pretty much every night if you wanted to. If you if you wanted, you could be at an open mic and and it's like I, I have a clean show coming up this weekend. I know what my clean is, and it's and it's and it's uh, it's being produced as a family friendly show. But to me, that's still you got to be thirteen and older to really even get some of the humor. But it's it should be safe enough for you know younger. But it's not it's not meant for younger. So I always come, you know, prepared with some knock knock jokes for the kids or um, if there's any kids that show up, you know, so I'll have some one liners that are just specifically for them, uh, which will be it'll be a lot of fun. But the there's been times previously that I've done a church function and I've brought along, a you know, a comedian that has a clean set. And then they decide for whatever reason not to do that clean set. And then it goes back on me. And I'm like, oh, so I learned, I man, I learned the hard way pretty quick that the vessel has to be clean. <laughs> the well, vessel's got to be there, clean. Well, you know, yeah. what's really, what's really interesting about that is there, <laughs> there, there are some comics that are not to be trusted that call themselves clean or they go under that title when it's convenient yeah and if you don't do your homework you know you can end up you know having a real problem that shows it's i've, I've heard <laughs> i've heard some real horror stories about comics that have you know bandied themselves about as though they were clean and woo, once they got to the show they let that thing rip and i went oh my gosh and i feel sorry <laughs> for the folks that hired them because you, you got to do your homework yeah now you, yeah. you you get a guy that says he's a clean comic, and then all of a sudden he's got some sets out there. And you're like, oh Lord, <laughs> yeah, digital oh, Lord footprint. God in heaven, how did he come up? So you have to do your homework. Um, I've been a part of some shows. To your point, uh, aforementioned point, Fifi, and of course, you know, you you went right alongside of it, Michelle. But I've been a part of some shows where I was the only clean comedian in the lineup. And yeah. people come up to me after the show and go, man, I didn't even realize you weren't cussing. Good set. I enjoyed it. And thank you. You know what I mean? And so that's when people get an opportunity to, to see that. No, it's not like you said, it's not the knock knock jokes. It, it It's not the little simple in their mind, childish, sophomoric, even corny stuff. It's real stuff. We're mm -hmm. talking about things that everybody goes through. We're just not using profanity. I mean, it can even be church you know, related, but it's 100 though. Yeah, that's the thing about it. You know, we're talking about things that actually happen. Right. And it's funny. You just got to tell the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 follow comedy 101, your pacing, your pitch, you know, your positioning, your timing, all of that stuff, whether it's dirty or clean, the mechanics of comedy work the same. It's just we yeah. made a conscious effort. We're not gonna be we're not gonna take it to the gutter. It, right. There's no reason yeah. to take it to the gutter. Go ahead, Fifi. I was gonna say one thing that I, I like to tell people about when I'm um talking about my philosophy on comedy, um, I feel like 
as a comedian, it's our job to share our perspective on the issues yeah. or our perspective on, you know, whatever we might be going through. And right. a lot of times we don't realize as humans how close we are to others based on our individual experiences. So right. as a comedian, if I can help you find the humor in something that might be depressing you, yeah. Yeah. I've had to see a different perspective, thereby helping you on a pathway to a journey of healing in that aspect where something that previously was like a sore wound for you can now be something that you can look at and say, you know what? <laughs> that is pretty funny. Yes. Oh, well, that's yes. good. Yeah. If you that's good. Michelle, were you going to add something? I was going to say last year I was on a tour and um, uh, a woman came up afterwards and she said, you know, this is the first time I've laughed in three months since her daughter was diagnosed with cancer. Wow. And she was, we needed this. And so I love the fact that we can have clean comedy that can still get that deep guttural laugh for people yeah. and, and just even if it's just for an hour to relieve that tension, that burden that they're carrying, because there's so much happening right now in people's lives it, worldwide that yeah. we need more laughter. We need more pure laughter. So I love what you just said, Fifi, about, you know, having, you know, you're talking about your experiences, but it connects with someone else and then they can go, oh, oh, well, if she, yeah. And, and they get their own little their moment of freedom or something that just they're continued healed in that area. And I, I love that. That's the best part of it. Yep. Well, it is. And, 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 you know, I, I think when you, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Maurice Brown comedy show on Bog radio in association with 24 flicks with comedians, Michelle Van Dusen and Felicia Fifi Frazier, as we prepare for the comedy in the kingdom tour coming your way next summer. One of the things that happened, about three years ago, came this weird deal they call COVID-19. As comedians, we were greatly affected because we had to stop. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going out all the time doing comedy. I mean, it was, for me, it, it <laughs> well, I could tell you right now, once it stopped, and when my wife said, you're not going anywhere, I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, and so... What I what I stopped and I thought, man, I think I needed that break. Yeah. Because I didn't real realize how maniacal I was becoming about stand up. Like I had to be out all the time. And you're thinking, well, it's for a good reason, but I needed to slow down. Right. And just kind of like spend more family time, do some other, you know, just separate myself from that stage for a minute. Thus the platform of the, the, the interviewing platform, the Maurice Brown comedy show and all the other things that came, you know, along with it. And I said, wow, okay, this is cool. I needed this. Your reaction, uh, Michelle Van Dusen, once everything stopped, how did that hit you? Uh, well, I live in Oklahoma, so not everything stopped here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta be honest. Uh, but it was, it was definitely interesting. Um, yeah. with, you know, cause my son was a college senior during that time frame, And, yeah. uh, when people got sick, they had to quarantine. Right. So now it was like, everybody was quarantining, teening. Well, yeah. he decided to bring home COVID sick, positive children to my house to quarantine Okay, because they still had a project that they had to do. And so if they did it at the dorms, you know, the way they record, they wouldn't be able to communicate. So I was like, what, what just happened? I wake up, everything's yeah. normal. The next day, now I have all these COVID positive sick kids in my house. I am now officially a frat house mom. This yes. is what happened. I'm like, yeah. well, let's have some healthy fun. Let's get you back healthy and back to school. <laughs> so, yes. you know. Uh, that was, that was kind of a fun and weird moment for us, but I took the reality of it and I turned it into a whole bit, you know, so it was nice to be able to, and everybody has COVID jokes now, you know, and some of them can still play 
and some can't at all. Um, but did anything up north cancel? Everything up north canceled. Um, I, I didn't see my dad for two years, two and a half years. Um, so that was kind of weird because, you know, I'm in Oklahoma. They're in the Chicago area. So I didn't see any family except my immediate family here. My husband yeah. didn't. Uh, he had to work. He was essential. I was not. Uh, so, <laughs> so it, it was a weird, weird time for everyone. So yeah, yeah. less money in the house, but we still, th I just, I thank God that, you know, my husband had a job that he was needed. So, so okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So Fifi, your take on that experience. Well, as an artist, it was really weird, but it was, um, it kind of pushed me to step outside of a few comfort zones that I have mm -hmm. been posting in for years. Right. Okay. Okay. So at the time when COVID, when COVID happened, my daughter was five months old and I was on maternity leave. Right. So yeah. I the work I had planned on taking that year off because my son had just gotten diagnosed with autism. So I had a three-year-old going through the autistic um, diagnosis process and I had a five-month-old newborn and I was like a stay-at-home mom. And uh, the only um, time I got to go out and talk to adults was when I had comedy shows. So yeah. when COVID hit, it was just like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> so I was talking to these little people all day and I almost lost my mind. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just need some some adult interaction. Somebody please call me, ask me how I'm doing. It was rough. But here's what happened. I started doing virtual shows, which I never in a million years thought that I would ever do that. Like yeah. I remember the first virtual show I was invited to do. I called up my mentor, uh Shanita, and I was like, hey. <laughs> They're trying to get me to do this virtual show. Have you done a virtual show? And she was like, I did a few. I don't like them. And I was like, I don't think I like this. But I tried it. And it wasn't that bad. It was really tough. But it wasn't that bad. And then that forced me to kind of step outside of, like, my comfort zone. Because, you know, give me a mic in 10 minutes and I'm good. You know, but put me in front of a computer screen in front of total strangers who... Half of them I can't even see or hear them laughing. And what do you do? You have to go off what you know. So it forced me to, you know, do my set as if I could hear laughs, even though I couldn't. So I was practicing the pauses and doing all that cool stuff. And then I started hosting more from a virtual standpoint, which I hated hosting. I was like, I don't host. All I do, I'm just going to come in and do 10, 15 minutes. That's all I got. I don't do hosting. So I started hosting and then like this year alone, you know, post pandemic, I've hosted more than I've done, you know, comedy sets. Yeah. Yeah. Which, it would not have been so, you know, before the, before COVID, because I had just written it off. I was like, Oh, I don't yeah. do that. Yeah. You know? And it, it has really pushed me to do some things that I didn't think I would do. And then also during COVID, I decided that I was not going to go back and be a full-time teacher, which also okay. put to do more of my art. Um, yeah. Being a full-time teacher is all-encompassing, and it was just, it was really hard trying to be a stand-up artist and doing full-time teaching because, yeah, yeah, because, just because. <laughs> yes. So I'm back part-time, and God has really been, you know, sustaining me, whereas since I've gone part-time teaching, I've gotten double the amount of comedy shows that I would normally get. So yeah. the, you know, it just balanced out everything. And God is like, okay, listen, I told you I got you. Calm down. Do what I told you to do. You know? <laughs> well, so, you know, that's good. Hosting is a different skill set and it's not, first of all, hosting is exhausting. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you have to do it. To, like you said, if you're doing a feature or a headline open or whatever, you're going to do your stuff and you're done. But when you're hosting, you you have a set and then you are like keeping it going the entire night. And it is an exhausting 
<laughs> experience and it doesn't really hit you till it's over. It's like, oh my goodness. Um, add it's in, a great skill wait, to Maurice, add in five inch heels on top of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, heck, you know, I and I can't imagine if that's a, unless I'm trying to be like Will Chamberlain, but no, it is difficult. It is very difficult. Now, on the other side of COVID-19, it's like, we're back. I was talking to a director earlier today, and acting is getting back to its normal comedy. I don't want to say that we're all, because COVID's still out there. But for all intents and purposes, I mean, you know, we're back. I mean, there are people out there still wearing masks, and they say the virus is out there. But we're back. How does comedy look now versus how it looked before COVID-19? Or does it look any different, better or worse? You know what I mm. I feel like there's a... Appreciation. A more There is more of appreciation. But okay. because, because of COVID, there was this influx of talent that became very well known and very popularized from um, online streaming and, yeah. okay. and things like that. So you have this influx of, you know, young artists who don't necessarily have the, the stage persona and the, the understanding of how comedy mm -hmm. works, but they are very popular and they have lots of fans. So, they have opened up the idea of uh, being an artist to another generation. Because I feel okay. like for a while stand up and, you know, comedy was kind of a middle aged thing, you know. But because of that, it's almost like a bridging of generations where now yeah. you have this, all these younger people who, who know how to appreciate comedy now. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, your take. Well, tagging on to that, I, ha I have watched a few of um, those online famous personalities, yeah. you know, get booked for something. And then two really strong comedians, you know, open for this person. Yeah. And then the person had, there was nothing. They had nothing. And it was, it was, it was weird to watch everybody was there for the the headliner the the personality yeah but the personality had they they couldn't bring anything you know they did some funny videos and did some few moves you can only do that for so long 45 minutes of it come on so yeah for real. that was so i think not only did it is it bridging a gap and it's opening a whole nother venue for people but it's also the ones that are in that position are realizing oh it's yeah not i should I should do my stuff at the house. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah. But there's, there's a few yeah. that have made that crossover and, and they're doing great. Yeah. I mean, they're, and I love seeing, you know, some of the young, uh, some of the young comics uh, do. And I would like to know more young comics. I actually would, you know, the, who are the up and coming um, comics? I would love to see them because yeah, I'm middle-aged and <clears throat> older. And um, yeah, so some of my comedic heroes, they're older than I am. And I'm, I'm watching them now have to learn how to, how do I get an online presence? Like, what do I do here? How do I, how do I make a TikTok? You know, <laughs> like it's, it's the, the, we're challenge. I'm just going to put it out there. We're computerized challenge, computer challenge, techn technical challenge. Technically. Um, yeah, technically. Like right now. <laughs> Here's the thing. I just lost my website. I had my website for 20 years okay. and I just lost it because the provider it doesn't support something anymore. So now I have to rebuild a whole new website. I'm starting from scratch. So it's going to take me a moment or two. So right now, if you went to my website, all you'd see is sites being worked on. Like that's it. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know where my domain name came from. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I got to I got to dig through documents and figure out how to rebuild. And uh, it's harder for us as we as we age. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't know if you guys have aging, but I'm aging and it's harder. 
yeah. Well, no, I mean, you see this white here. I'm, 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 I'm aging, but I, I just want to say this. Um, I think that comedy, uh, how should I put this? Has gotten quite crowded since COVID nineteen, and there's all these, and you both alluded to this, but there, there there's all these new comics everywhere, and I, I think that the craft of comedy doesn't change. I think the online presence, the social media aspect of, of comedy and all these different things, you know, a lot of times it's not stand up comedy. Mm -hmm. Stand up comedy is always going to be the same. And so the, 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 you know, the bones of comedy are being challenged by these other kinds of comedy. And, and it so so for the stand up purist it's become a challenge because you're yeah. dealing with all these different things. And as you said, I mean, you go to a, a stand up show. Hey, dude, you're going to have to come up with a little bit more than videos and these little uh, these little, you know, gyrations you're making up there. That that where where's the stand up, dude? And you as a headliner, you seeing these guys bomb. Um, and so then we have to as stand ups kind of sift through all of that. So I, I think and not to hate on the new comic. But there are a ton of new comedians out there, uh, yeah. and which could be a good thing. But it, it's a challenge for the stand-up purist because you're yeah. looking around and you're going, oh, man, where all these people come from? I'm going to leave it alone because it's going to sound like I'm hating. <laughs> Let me just say this. Um, let's go to representing, because we're clean comics, we're Christian comics. How do we represent ourselves when we're in a situation where we're in the age of Will Smith? Everybody's been talking about he, listen, Will Smith slapped that young man uh, a while back, and you can still hear the echo from that slap. Um, and then, then you have other noted comedians who are dealing with people actually now coming on stage and physically uh, making an attempt, if not actually physically uh, making contact with a comedian. I think, matter of fact, even Drake did a concert re recently, and he was rapping. Some guy came on stage and had to remove the guy but as a as a as a, a comedian that represents the lord and you're in a situation where you're being heckled verbally accosted and so forth we don't i'd, I'd love to hear your responses because i have a feeling fifi doesn't give a dog on but anyway uh what do you do <laughs> in that situation how do you rep christ and deal with the heckler fifi why you have to come to me first? Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to go in. Um, my bad, <laughs> Fifi. Uh, yeah, call down here. fire from heaven. Come on. Yeah, on it for a minute. Uh, go, what's up, Fifi? Talk to us. When I'm in that type of a situation, yeah, which I've been in a few yeah. times. Yeah. Before, yeah. Um, it depends on if the person backs down after my first warning. Okay. So I'll give you opportunity to reevaluate your stance. Yes. Uh, but yes. if you do not respond to the opportunity given, then I'm going to have to help you uh, remember that I am the person with the microphone and you are not. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So there's been a few times, I guess, in recent years, um, where this one guy, I, I love that one. He, um, he tried to heckle me and he had on this shirt with like these two stripes in the middle. And I was like, somebody please tell Charlie Brown to leave me. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole audience was like rolling. And I was like, I, I really did get, try to give that young man an opportunity to leave me alone. Um, and then there was this other time, this was recent, probably I think it might've been last year. I was doing this event for a senior. Um, it was like a senior's party. And this one yeah. lady, she had had a few drinks and every time I said something she was laughing real extra hard and then she started talking with me while I oh. was on stage and I was like I said okay all right okay that's enough yep just kept talking so I said somebody get your auntie she need to go outside and <laughs> fell out laughing it's like okay ma'am please stop because I'm not going to assault you but i'll say enough to just you know get the audience to be like okay you need to calm down so well know. and 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 that sounds 
perfectly acceptable. I don't think you, you know, crossed any lines by doing what you had to do. Right. Person asked for it, you handled your business, and they went away. Michelle Van Dusen, how about yourself? I don't get heckled now that my mom doesn't come to my shows. So, ah, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I. <laughs> I haven't, I actually haven't been heckled in a long time. Uh, okay. In June, there was a, a show in Indiana where there was a drunk guy who was just loud, you know, but he wasn't, he didn't get overly obnoxious, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. and I think he was just enjoying himself. And then that was the end of that. Um, but I, I haven't been heckled in a long time. Uh, so uh, I'm not opening the door for anyone to start doing that uh, because I will. Call down a uh, fire from heaven. And uh, <laughs> I I love how Fifi answered that. Because I'm like, oh, someone get your auntie. I like that. I like these are good answers. Because you're supposed to have those pat answers ready to go. And it, if you're in a club, then you're also supposed to have, you know, an indication with the, because the club is supposed to handle the security in that yeah. sense. Um, it's just so many people are hurting these days and to see, you know, so if you're, if you say something that's offensive in your set or you, you know, you offended half the crowd or, you know, be, so that's one of the things too, is I personally don't do anything political. Um, I try to stay away. You know, there's certain subjects that I just stay away from because yeah. Yeah. if I was to say something, and that offended one person. Well, then, you know, that can get that whole little table over here talking or, you know, and then it's just disruptive and, and the the fun, the joy is gone. And I don't I don't like that. So um, I, yeah. I avoid those. I don't like confrontations. Um, so there's that. I, I will say this. Uh, our church right now is um, studying the book of Revelation. Okay. And the, the minister said. He goes, um, yeah, next week we're going to talk about the Antichrist. So don't get vaccinated before you, or before you come or something like that. <laughs> it was just it, so that was funny. But, you know, people are going to take that out of context and they're going to get upset and they're going to write in or they're going to quit going to church. or And it was just if you weren't in the room that moment, you wouldn't you wouldn't get it. And that's what I love about live comedy versus watching the reels and, and videos and stuff. Cause when you're in the room, you get that, that joke about something that's happening in the back, you know, like you just, you get it cause you're there anyway. Okay. Next question. <laughs> so I, I, I think that, you know, we, we have to just look at it in context. We, when you're getting attacked, People are looking at us and they're going, yeah, but I thought you were clean or I thought you were Christian. So you, you, there's a certain level you try to withhold. I was doing a show, especially when you're doing a secular show and you're talking about alcohol and you're doing something clean. I did a show once and this guy got mad and he charged the stage. Been drinking Ooh. and I just said, ladies and gentlemen, it is OK. It is OK. I'm taking a little long. I promised him we'd go chase Pokemon. So <laughs> it's going to be OK. Uh, everybody started laughing at it. He got embarrassed and said, out oh. and didn't cross any lines. You know, yeah. it was just a harmless joke. But I just think <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're going to do when you get in that situation. But right. the Holy Ghost will give you something, you know, because there are comics out there in this game, in the secular game that will fry you up and they won't leave you alone. I mean, they'll matter of fact, they'll make their set about you. Um, I had Mark <laughs> and uh, I mean, when you step out there, you've, you put yourself in that situation. Right. And you know, you don't have the microphone to your point, Fifi. I've got the microphone. You want to be a comic? Hey, have at it, but I'm on now. You, you know, and so that people, they like to you know show off in front of their friends, you know, they can make a couple of smart remarks uh, you know, show them that they're funny too, and then they run into a bus. So, um, I'm not, I'm not wood for necessarily from. I had Mark Christopher Lawrence on the show, and he was saying, he said, "I'm a man. He, I'll kick you square in your back." <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, Mark. Okay, dude, I get it." But it's it's a it's a situation that 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 can be quite interesting, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching the Maurice Brown Comedy Show. The 
Comedy in the Kingdom edition with two members of the Comedy in the Kingdom tour coming your way next summer, Felicia Frazier and Michelle Van Dusen on the Maurice Brown Show. You can listen to this show also uh, where all major podcasts are heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, you, you name it, we're there. Um, the Maurice Brown Comedy Show comes your way every Monday through Friday right here on Bog Radio. So, look, guys, look, thanks for stopping by. We're going to wrap it up right there. Uh, like I said, we had Mark Christopher Lawrence and Willie Brown, Shanita Morris, and Gilbert Esquivel. Uh, now I got you two guys. I'm going to probably have either Leland Claussen, uh, Joey Aiello, jo Joey's a scream, um, Kim Curley, or Danny Successful Simmons. Uh, one of those, two of those folks for sure coming up on the next edition. So, for Michelle Van Dusen, for Felicia Frisch, I'm Maurice Brown saying, you guys have a great day and may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you and your families, everybody. And God bless. Thanks again. Thanks a lot, guys, for being on the show. God bless you. Thank you.